Well, again, a very good morning. And may I say, I'm so pleased to see so many old and new faces. And I'm sure there'll be a few more people coming today. I know there is one or two coming down later on. But can I just give you the house rules first before we get on to a bit of fun? First, on to my left here, the lads with the yellow jackets are behind, Bill, Dave, Steve and Kevin, they are our marshals for the day. If they ask you to step back while we're moving any vehicles, please take heed and do what they ask you, please, as of the health, health and safety. I've also been asked to sort of warn dads, if you're going into the jet's toilets, the hot water when the kids are washing their hands is very, very hot. So please be careful, kids don't scold themselves. Okay, I think you mostly found the best place here, and that's right in that far corner, Rick's Coffee and Burger Place. And uh, I've had a baker burger myself, and I suggest you go along and get something to keep you warm. Okay, we've got, I can't see any five in down there, but we've got Gary and the Red Crew from Blackburn uh, attending today. Please go down, turn the kids down, have a look, and basically show them all around the engine, etc. And on the bus behind you, of course, we've got the children's area for face painting. Uh, we've got a colouring competition. We're giving money out for the prize on that. Jason's lightning is dead already. He talks money. He's there. Okay. The space painting. John will make you some balloons for the children. Anything on there. There's some free drinks on there. Some toffees. Everything else. Go on the Bouncy Castle. It's all free. Go as much time as you want. Okay. No problems. No charge. There is an agenda around about, uh, scattered on walls. Uh, we're going to try and keep to as, as near as time as we can, uh, but obviously we're running a little bit late, don't come knocking on my door. There is, and I haven't seen anybody here, this gentleman here, what's your name? Sheldon. Sheldon. You've got a quiz in your hand, haven't you? That's it. Now you must get one of those quizzes. If you haven't got one, see these lads here. They'll give you a quiz and they'll give you a free pen. Uh, Rick in the corner is doing a free lunch for the winners, and it's only ten simple questions. Simple, isn't it? Quite. Quite simple. Quite simple. It's all based on this depot. It's all based on uh, questions around here, basically. And I didn't want people to Google sort of answers, and because I've got a phone like that, they, they get in before anybody else. It's all part of fun. That's what today's all about. Okay, I've got another gentleman here to my... Where is he? Where's John? Where's John? Uh, John? John, John... Photographer? He's here! He's here! This gentleman here, right, is my official photographer. Please, if you want your photos taken in any stagecoach buses, any buses that are one of our new buses, you're going to sit in the cabs, I'm sure these lads will, will provide it. We'll take your photos, he'll email them to you, and basically you can uh, take it on from there and get your own photos, okay? So at this point, okay, I think I've covered most areas. We are going to be doing um, 2101, it's going to go out around about two o'clock, followed by this beautiful vehicle here. It's going to be going out uh, around town around about two o'clock. And then around three o'clock, we're going to have the cake cutting uh, summary here with one of the company officials and basically all the vehicles will be going out around about half past three. Okay. Right, so what I'd like to do now, I'd like to invite a couple of old staff and new staff up uh, so we can have a chat with them and have a bit of fun. And I've got a gentleman here, what I call one of the big hitters. I haven't seen him for years and he's been meeting and greeting people and saying, oh, who are you, who are you? He used to work on Fishwick's buses he used to work in the office when I first started. Give a warm welcome for Pat Keogh, please. Come forward, Pat. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So we've got Pat Keogh from the past, and I think I like somebody else from the past now. And I've just seen him out the corner of my eye having a cup of coffee. And he was against Pat. They was fighting tooth and dog and their years. So uh, this gentleman's from the Union. And I've known him many, many years. He supported this depot through thick and thin and also comes to a lot of social occasions. 
So, a lot of people do know him, but a big round of applause, please, for Colin Argreaves, please. Come forward, Colin. Without the coffee. Welcome, Colin. Please take a seat. Okay. I'll put the beers out for you, boys. Okay. We'll come to them in a minute. Okay. Now, I did see a gentleman around somewhere. Behind him, me. Pete Millini in the building, please. He's asleep. He's Who is he? He's asleep. Yeah. He's asleep. Who is no, he's he? not here. I could have swore I saw him here somewhere. Pete Millini, no? No, okay. No, okay, right. Oh, okay. Well, I've got two other people I'd like to bring up for a bit of a chat, and which I've got a lot of respect for. Again, I can come here and just go on about myself, but I've been here about 20 years. It says on the seniority list when I started. These two gentlemen I'm going to bring up now have been my backbone if I've got a problem. Uh, and these vehicles don't run on their own. So I'd like to first bring up Bill Livesey, please. So a round of applause for Bill Livesey, please. Thank you. I'll charge hands here. Come on, Bill. <laughs> please take a seat, Bill. Thank you. Okay. No, that trophy doesn't go there. Bill hasn't won anything. See ya. Okay. Right, and another person that I'd like to bring up, if I may, please. Again, he's respected throughout this depot, and that's Steve Clough. Come forward, Steve. Oh, a big round of applause for Steve. He thought he was going to get away with this. He didn't think he was going to come up and I'll tell you a few words. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Take a seat. Okay. Now then, I'll turn this way now. I can say what I want now to you because you're not in charge of me anymore. I'll go to my left here, this gentleman here, Pat Keogh. There used to be a building, there used to be a building on the corner there called The Rock, and Pat was in there, am I right, Pat? Yeah. And uh, he was our mod clerk, and most people know what mod clerk does, and that's basically give you the duties. I'm going to ask Pat one simple question before I hand him the mic. Please, can you, can you reach that mic? Can you stretch over that? Just make sure it's on. And there was a lot of old people here, and I was a bit green behind the ears. Yeah. Okay. I was a bit green behind the ears. But a lot of staff used to say, if you didn't do what we, you wanted us to do in a duty, as in you give us a 12 o'clock start, right, and we said no, Pat, did you go and get offence about this? Did you go moody on us? Never. I know, oh, what a lie. Tell us the truth, Pat. Now tell us the truth. Did you, you fall out with us? Well, maybe. 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 Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't speak to us for a week. I was dead keen on covering things, so I didn't like to lose any money. Right. And then what? I wouldn't mention one thing. We had the people that wanted early finishes to go to football, so that was a problem. Right, well, I'll come on to that in a minute. But then again, like I said, it was a fact, wasn't it? It was a fact that you got a bit moody. Yes. Because can I say now, in Chas Geary, here with the, the black and white t-shirt, he does the same. He does exactly the same to drivers. <laughs> Pat, I'll hand over the mic to you now. You'd like to say a few words. Well, I came here with Ronnie Jackson, and time, times were hard, and we had some uh, problems with Accrington. I think he's here. <laughs> And, uh, well, this is a surprise really because I didn't know I'd have to say anything, otherwise I would have put something out. But there were good, good times here and there were some nice people, good workers, and we got the job done. Let's see what we did. It's good enough, Pat, it's good enough. Yeah. Round of applause for Pat Gale, please. Thank you. Okay, can you just notice there's two bottles of beer here? Now, Maybe Colin will give us an idea in a minute, but one's from Cass Smith, thank you Cass, I'll give you it back later, and one from Colin, alright? Tell us the story behind it, Colin. We just got him as a, a thank you in as many ways, and as you can see, if you have a look at the date, 1986, and that's when deregulation came in, and that's when Buzz Conley started going down to Henderson, it was a, a dog fire, we were all the private operators on the, on the road. And uh, the company just gave us these, that's all. Okay, Pat, Pat has mentioned something, and I'd like to just touch on. 
Why did you not drive on a Saturday afternoon? <laughs> Somebody had a laugh over here. Why, why did you not drive on a Saturday afternoon? Never. You were a certain football team playing. Burnley? Stop swearing. How can you Stanley? That's not as bad as Burnley. <laughs> um, as a, the shop steward here for many, many years, obviously you've come across all sorts of cases of disciplines and did this shock you in any way? What some of the lads did? Yeah, we, uh, we had one or two battles. We what Pat just said we came here on you like, and uh, I always remember one instance. It was uh, a lady at Tom Dutchess, and uh, Ronnie couldn't understand why she weren't coming in, and he, he, he realised that once a month the ladies went on the cycle. <laughs> so, um, unfortunately, I had to say to Ronnie, I said, it's human nature, Ronnie. I says, we can't back human nature. So she went on a bike ride somewhere? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Thank you, Carl. Thanks for more. You're all welcome. Thank you. Okay, as I say, I can't say too much, especially about these two lads. But I will, before I go any further, and I'm sure Steve won't forgive me for coming away from this one, um, I want another big round of applause for Bill because he's helped get this day together. He knows a lot of you folk out there, and he's got Russ here today, and he's really got this sort of. That's way, right, okay. Right. Okay, Bill. The floor's yours. Would that say a few words? Uh, well, I, I started work here in 1975 um, as a snotty nosed uh, apprentice. Um, a lot of the faces I see here today were here then. Colin, Peter Nichols, who's stood in the back there and one or two other people. Uh, started my apprenticeship as a, as a group of bodybuilding. And um, at the time, you know, Ribble was still very much Ribble. It was part of National Bus Company. But um, a lot of the old tradition was still there, uh, very regimented. Um, even the stores was, uh, was very much based on um, and the RAF um, and army uh, for the requisitions because the founders of the company were ex-service personnel so that's why I was very regimented over the years. Um, one lad who, who was uh, working in the body shop with us, he was actually uh, um, a fitter who was on his last 12 months of his, um, of his occupation, you know, and Ribble used to um, Give them like an easier time for the last 12 months so he came into the body shop helping out and, and uh, teddy price i suppose like one or two people who nod the heads and remember ted uh, i see him now he flat cap on no teeth in his head uh, people have never seen him with teeth in and um, ted actually started as a 14 year old lad up at the original garage at dock street now Dock Street was opened in 1925 and Ted could remember converting solid tyre buses to pneumatic tyres. And I didn't take too much notice of that at the time, you know, but as the years have gone on, uh, I sort of thought, well, you know, the amount of people that I've come across and how the industry's changed over the years and, uh, um, and this is where we are today, you know. Uh, I don't think we're in a in a happier position as, as what we have been um, and I'm just hoping you know that um, you know, in years to come you know that the industry can pick its feet up again and and, uh, and get back to where it was. Okay, okay thank you Bill. So that round of applause Bill please. Okay, can I just say before I move on to Steve, before I move on to Steve, turn it down. Um, there is that quiz, and I'm going to announce Steve uh, in a minute, but there is some clues around the depot. If you look to my right, Stagecoach have put a clue on already, if you've been looking, it's coming right across at the moment. That's one of the clues, and you've got a clue over there about the most senior driver. And now I'm going to give you another question, if you look at your, your sheets now. So I would like to welcome Steve Clough. Morning Steve. Morning. Right. How long have you been here Steve? 31. 31 years, that's the answer. 
So get it, there you go, you see, he's on the ball, this that's going for his burger. 31 years here, yeah? So, tell us a couple of stories then. What can I say? It's, uh, it's surprising, I didn't think I'd feel as I do now. Yesterday I would have thought of that, but it's surprising how many people you bump into and bring back memories. Um, it's a sad day, I can't say anymore. I don't know this couldn't get any better you know, or worse where we're going, but A lot of them around here, <coughs> and I'd argue there'd be a few, <laughs> might say, but I think we've uh, started off as obviously on the shop floor, um, still there for pushing the pen as well, so, but it's a great turn now, last time it is. Thanks for that Steve, well, thank, thank you. you. Round of applause for Steve please. <laughs> Can I just say my five minutes worth, uh, and I'm going to introduce somebody in a minute. But I started as a conductor many moons ago in Bosendale. And I met a beautiful wife over here called Sue. She's over here, some people know her. But besides that, how the bus industry's changed. Uh, we've got some beautiful vehicles at the back there, a Ribble, uh, that I used to um, drive, etc. And basically, you've got conductors on, etc. You go down to this bus that rides inside now, one of the latest bus, buses in the company. It's got cameras on it, it's got a satellite system, they know exactly where I am, how things change. But of course it's more work for these boys to do. This lot didn't have it. Okay? This lot here couldn't give a damn where he was, he was on a chip butty somewhere, he wouldn't know and he wouldn't know. <coughs> so, before I go any further, I'd like to introduce one of the lads from the Ribble Enthusiasm Club. Please put your hand up for Ray, please. Come forward, Ray, thank you. Right, good morning everybody. My name's Ray Bignall from the Ribble Vehicle Preservation Trust. You probably would have seen that we brought some vehicles for you to look at today. But the particular thing I wanted to mention is that we are intent on keeping a good history of the entire Ribble company alive. Not just the vehicles, which are the obvious thing, but we have an archive of artefacts showing the history of Ribble, which was a remarkable company in terms of the fact it seemed to do everything for itself. Um, Bill has mentioned the fact it was a regimented company, they had all sorts of systems and procedures which we are trying to keep alive, or the memories of. But one of the things that is contributing to that is what we call the Sound Archive. And this is essentially an oral history of uh, how Ribble operated in its heyday. And the idea is that people who work for Ribble can volunteer to come forward and talk to us uh, using a, a tape system, uh, it's actually a digital recorder, we're recording all these conversations, then in due course we'll edit them and make them available um, as, a, as, a, as I say, an oral history of Ribble. It must be the case there are quite a few people here today who work for Ribble in its heyday. And if any of you are interested in participating in this scheme, then please come and see us on the exhibition bus. We've got some explanatory um, posters around about it, and you'll also find some envelopes of this type. And if you're interested in taking part, take an envelope, fill it in, send me the details, I tend to do the interviews and it's very informal, we don't have to we don't have to feel concerned about it, it's done in a relaxed manner. Yeah. You certainly remember me if I electrocuted myself, I'm sure, so I'm going to try and keep away from that. So really it is done as I say in an informal manner, but nonetheless it is contributing very much to the history and keeping the history of Ribble alive. So if you are interested, come and see us on the exhibition bus and I'll be very happy to uh, tell you more about it and answer any questions you may have. Okay, thanks Kevin. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Well, all it is now is please have a, a wander around. Some people have just come. Uh, I do know there's a gentleman coming that a lot of these people haven't seen uh, and he should be coming back Father Christmas. Uh, I'm waiting for him, looking for him. But that these people haven't seen for a long time and I know they'll have a coffee together. So enjoy the rest of the day. See us further on this uh, 563 bus, which is going to do the bus pull in approximately about half an hour, three quarters of an hour. Uh, but thanks for your attention and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Bye-bye.